Good morning, children. We have completed the uh, third chapter, that is uh, Plant Kingdom. And in the description box of the last video, I have given the link. From that, you can write the notes. Today, we will start with fourth chapter, that is Animal Kingdom. What is an animal? Animals are multicellular. Multicellular means they are made up of many cells and heterotrophic organisms means they cannot prepare their own food. They are dependent on other organisms, either plants or animals for their food. Without cell wall, their cells do not have wall and they do not have chlorophyll pigment. Chlorophyll is the green color pigment. As they do not have chlorophyll pigment, they are heterotrophic organisms, that is, they cannot prepare their own food. All the animals that are present on the earth are classified into 11 major phyla. In other words, you can say that Kingdom Animalia has 11 major phyla. Singular is phylum and plural is phyla. So 11 major phyla are there of Kingdom Animalia. And that phyla are, number one is Porifera, number two is Nidaria or Tenophora, then Platyhelminthus, Eschelminthus, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Hemichordata and Chordata. In spite of differences in structure and form of different animals, there are certain fundamental features common in various individuals in relation to the arrangement of cells, body symmetry, nature of coelom, patterns of digestive, circulatory or reproductive systems. These features are used as the basis of animal classification. So, features which are used for the basis of animal classification are levels of organization, body symmetry, germinal layers which are developed during the embryonic stage, coelom that is body cavity, metamerism which is also known as segmentation and notochord, presence or absence of notochord. Let us start with the levels of organization. All members of Kingdom Animalia, as I told you, are multicellular, heterotrophic and eukaryotes. Eukaryotes means they have well-defined nuclear membrane. They have well-defined nucleus because nuclear membrane is present. But all of them do not exhibit the same pattern of organization of cells. The cells in their body are of several types. These are organized into many functional units of progressively increasing complexity. The animal body shows four basic plan of structural organization like cellular level of organization, tissue level of organization, organ level of organization and organ system level of organization. Let us start with the first one that is cellular level of organization. In this level, the body shows some division of labor among cells. They are remarkably independent and can change their form and function. It is found in sponges. The body consists of many cells. 
that are arranged as loose cell aggregates but the cells do not form tissues rather each cell functionally active independently for example porifera so children you have understood in this case that is in the cellular level of organization there are many cells and the cells are arranged loosely okay they there are loose cell aggregates but the cells they do not combine they do not group to form the tissues moving to the second level of organization that is tissue level of organization the cells performing the same function are arranged into tissues hence is called tissue level of organization example in cilentrates the arrangement of cells is more complex cnidarians tenophores the third is organ level of organization in platyhelminths and other higher phyla tissues are grouped together to form organs each specialized for a particular function that is organ level organization is present and the fourth one is the organ system level of organization in animals like annelids arthropods mollusk echinoderms and chordates organs have associated to form functional systems each system concerned with a specific physiological function this is called organ system level of organization organ systems is different in different groups of animals and it exhibit various patterns of complexities the digestive system in platyhelminths has only a single opening to the outside of the body that serves as both mouth and anus and is called incomplete it is called incomplete digestive system once again the digestive system like in platyhelminths has only one opening or the single opening to the outside of the body which serves as both it acts as mouth also and anus also so through mouth the uh, food is taken inside the body and through the same opening which acts as anus <clears throat> the waste material is released outside the body so it is called incomplete digestive system a complete digestive system has two openings that is mouth and anus another example is the two types of circulatory systems one is open circulatory system and the second one is the closed circulatory system open circulatory system in which blood is pumped out of the heart and cells and tissues are directly bathed in blood in the open circulatory system what happens the blood which is pumped out of the heart will not enter into any of the vessels because blood vessels are not there so the blood will um, be filled in the uh, intercellular spaces because of which the cells and tissues uh, will take directly bath in the blood the second type is the closed type of circulatory system okay in closed type of circulatory system the blood is circulated through a network of blood vessels of varying diameters okay you know there are different types of blood vessels of different diameters like arteries veins and capillaries 
okay so the blood which is pumped out of the heart will enter in the blood vessels that is in the arteries in veins and in capillaries and tissues remain in touch with this blood vessels moving to the second basis that is symmetry the symmetry refers to the arrangement of similar body parts on two sides of main axis of the body <coughs> <clears throat> on the basis of symmetry animals can be of two different types number 1 is asymmetrical and number 2 is symmetrical animals in which any plane passes through the center does not divide them into two equal parts or two similar halves such animals are called asymmetrical example most porifereans snails etc here you can see in this diagram in this diagram this shows that when any plane passes through the center okay this plane which passes through the center does not divide the body into two equal halves okay so this is said to be asymmetrical or asymmetry clear example in sponges the second type of symmetry is symmetrical right the body of some animals can be divided into two similar parts or into two similar or equal halves by one or more planes such animals are called symmetrical i hope you have understood this as in this figure you can see when the bod when the uh, animal is divided from this plane central plane you can see that the two equal halves are being obtained so that is symmetric okay here this is example of sponges where the plane which divides it when it divides the two parts which are produced are not equal or they are not similar so that is asymmetry clear if we talk of this then this plane divides the organism into two equal halves so it is symmetrical even in this diagram you can see that the body is divided into two equal halves so it is symmetrical the symmetry can be further divided as the radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry when any plane passes through the central axis of the body divides the organism into two identical halves it is called radial symmetry example cylindrates tenophora or tenophores and echinoderms okay here the body can be divided into two equal halves by any vertical plane along the central axis of the body you can see this is one plane this is second plane but through any plane when the body is divided the two equal halves are produced right so it is called radial symmetry in some animals body can be divided into identical left and right halves in only one plane as in this figure you can see the organism is divided only through this plane and when it is divided through this plane the two uh, identical left and right parts are produced okay this is called the bilateral symmetry example annelids arthropods etc 
again this is the uh, slide showing you the radial symmetry where you can see the organism when it is divided through any plane okay through this plane or through this plane it produces two equal half so it is called radial symmetry and if you see in this when the body is divided uh, into the through the central axis any uh, through uh, when the body is divided into identical left and right half here left and right half are produced okay only through one plane if you divide the body through this plane it is not going to produce right and left part if you divide it through this plane it is not going to produce uh, left and right part only through this vertical uh, plane when the body is divided it produces the left and the right part so this is called the bilateral symmetry i hope this is clear to everyone now the body of bilaterally symmetrical animals that is the when the body is divided into equal right and left half then it has a dorsal side means the upper side a ventral side that is the lower side left and the right side that is the lateral sides anterior side which is called cephalic side and posterior that is the anal or the tail side if the body is bilaterally symmetrical okay then only this uh, parts are observed or this sides are observed you can see in this diagram okay this is the dorsal side this is anterior side or cephalic side this is the posterior or tail or anal side and the lower part is the ventral side now the organisms can be classified on the basis of germinal layers germ layers are group of cells behaving as a unit during early stages of embryonic development this germ layers differentiate to give rise to all the tissues organs of fully formed body of individuals and on the basis of germ layers animals are classified into two types number 1 is diploblastic and number 2 is triploblastic here you can see this is the blastocil okay the blastocil divides and produces the blastula okay further there will be division of uh, cells the cells will divide and it will form three different layers okay that is called gestula gestula okay the three layers are mesoderm ectoderm and endoderm right and depending upon uh, the presence or absence of this layer the organisms are divided into two types that is diploblastic animals and triploblastic animals now animals in which the cells are arranged in two germ layers an external ectoderm and an internal endoderm are called diploblastic animals in addition an undifferentiated jelly like layer which is called mesoglea is present in between the ectoderm and endoderm example is cilentrates then triploblastic animals the animals in which the developing embryo has a third germinal layer or it has three germ layers which are the outer or external is ectoderm the inner or internal is endoderm and in between ectoderm and endoderm the middle layer called mesoderm is also developed then such organisms are called triploblastic animals 
Example, all animals from phylum Platyhelminthes to Chordata. The next feature on the basis of which the classification of animals is done is the presence or absence of coelom that is body cavity. The body cavity which is lined by mesoderm is called the coelom. Mesoderm I have just now explained you it is the middle layer which is formed in the triploblastic organisms in between the ectoderm and endoderm layer right so the coelom is the cavity which is lined by the mesoderm the presence or absence of coelom is very important in classification it is seen between the body wall and the gut wall Coelom separates the muscles of gut and body wall and based on the nature of coelom animals are of three types number one acelomates number two pseudocelomates and number three coelomates here in this diagram you can see this is the coelom okay the white color part is the coelom and it is in between the this is gut okay this is gut so in between the uh -huh, and this is mesoderm so in between the mesoderm and the gut a cavity which is produced is called the coelom and the coelom is lined by the mesoderm clear Now, acelomates means they do not have coelom. The animals in which the body cavity is absent are called acelomates. The space between the body wall and digestive cavity is filled with matrix, that is by parenchyma cells. Example, poriferins, platyhelminths, cylindrates, tenophores and flatworms. In some animals, the body cavity is not lined by mesoderm. Instead, the mesoderm is present as scattered pouches in between the ectoderm and endoderm. You can see here, these are scattered pouches of mesoderm. Okay, so such a body cavity is called the pseudocelum, <coughs> and the animals possessing them are called called pseudocelomates. Pseudo means false, right? So true cavity is not present. The false coelom is present. Example: eschelmins. Then coelomates. The animals having true coelom are called coelomates. A true coelom arises within the mesoderm and is therefore lined by mesodermal tissues that is externally by parietal peritoneum and internally by visceral peritoneum. Example the annelids to chordata. So, children, acelomates means they do not have coelom, pseudocelomate means the false cavity or coelom like structure is present, and the mesoderm is scattered and it is in the form of pouches. Silomate means true body cavity, true cavity is present which arises from the mesoderm. Okay. There are different functions of coelom, like it accommodates visceral organs. Visceral organs are the soft internal organs of the body which includes lungs, 
heart organs of digestive system reproductive system excretory system and circulatory system silomic fluid reduces friction between the visceral organ and it acts as a shock absorber now moving to the next feature that helps in classification that is metamerism in some animals the body is externally and internally divided into segments a segmentation that simultaneously divides body both externally and internally is called metamerism or metameric segmentation this kind of segmentation is found in annelids arthropods and chordates like here you can see in this figure the body is divided into small small segments here also in this diagram also you can see the body is divided into segments right so this is called this phenomenon in which the body or organ is externally and internally divided into the metamers is known as metamerism moving to the last feature that is presence or absence of notochord it is mesodermally derived rod like structure formed on the dorsal side during embryonic development in some animals animals with notochord are called chordates and those without notochord are called non chordates okay so notochord is mesodermally derived and it is rod like supporting rod like structure which is formed on the dorsal side during the embryonic development here you can see in this figure on the dorsal side of the body you can see this brown color line that is called notochord even in this on the dorsal side the pink color part which is produces the notochord right so it is rod like structure and it is produced on the dorsal side and it is produced during the embryonic stage okay when the zygote divides and produce embryo embryo further divides so during that embryonic development uh, a uh, rod like structure is produced and that is called notochord so those animals which have notochord are called chordates and those which do not have notochord are called non chordates example porifera to echinoderms now this slide shows the kingdom animalia with different features okay different phylum are phyla are porifera nidaria or tenophora tenophora platyhelminths eschelminths annelida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata hemichordata and chordata okay then the levels of organization porifera have cellular level of organization then there they are asymmetrical or some in some of them it is radial symmetry also and they are acylomic means they do not have body cavity in tenophora tissue level of organization is observed organisms are diploblastic means they form only ectoderm and endoderm and a jelly like layer in between ectoderm and endoderm called mesoglea is present they have radial symmetry means when the body is divided through any plane which passes through the central axis the body can be divided into two equal halves and they are acylomates platyhelminths they show organ and organ system level of organization they are triploblastic means they have three layers three germ layers during the embryonic development one the outer one is the ectoderm middle is mesoderm and the inner is endoderm they show bilateral symmetry means when the body is divided into through the vertical plane it produces right and the left half 
and they are acylomate that is they do not produce the body cavity eskelmins we can uh, say that they have organ system level of organization in their body organ systems are produced they are triploblastic again three germ layers are produced then bilateral right and left halves can be produced equal halves can be produced and they are pseudo silomate means they do not produce true body cavity annelids arthropoda mollusca echinodermata hemichordata and chordata show the organ system level of organization have three germ layers they can produce right and left equal halves that is they are bilateral and they are silomates means they can produce true body cavity so children that is all for today in our next next video we will be continuing the same chapter i hope this much is clear to everyone Thank